Welcome everyone! You are about to embark on a journey through the universe as you indulge in this extraordinary essence of enlightened, empowered, evolved. Let the show begin in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Just in time. Greetings everyone, I'm Luke Bryan Smith and welcome to Enlightened, Empowered, Evolved, where we educate, motivate, and liberate you through enlightening dialogues, empowering music, and evolving content. I know everyone's doing well and everything is unfolding perfectly. I'm excited yet again because my next guest is a spiritual health practitioner, an astrologer, author, coach, and a whole lot more. But without further ado, allow me to introduce to you Chiron Ying. How are you doing, Chiron? Thank you, Lud. Thanks for having me here. I am doing great today. It's morning here all the way in Kuala Lumpur, and it's oh, wow. a beautiful, bright morning. Yeah. Absolutely. Where Where is that again? Uh, where is that? That's in, that's in Malaysia. It's oh, somewhere Malaysia. between Thailand and Singapore, Southeast Asia, and we are right at the equator. So we have no winter. It's summer all year long. Oh, wow. See, now, now you're just rubbing it in. <laughs> well, Sounds, you guys are coming with summer absolutely yes absolutely amazing and i love yeah tropical weather when i when i travel that's usually my destination is somewhere tropical tropical my last destination we went to was uh an island uh off the coast of africa but it's mostly indian inhabitants but it, it, the, the island is called mauritius beautiful mm, island beautiful mm. oh yes beautiful yes and I think we're going to Fiji next. I'm not sure. I, oh, that's I have beautiful. To, yeah, yes. You love yes. your islands, huh? I love islands. Yes, yes. Right now, my favorite island is in the Caribbean, and it's uh, called uh, Antigua. It's beautiful mm. there. Very beautiful. Wow. Amazing. But enough of that. I would just like to say, before we get it, uh, I go any further, that I believe that uh, time is one of our most precious assets. And for you to choose to spend some of your time here with me on Enlightened Empowered Evolve, I just want to extend my sincerest gratitude to you. Thank you for being here at this present moment with me, Kyron. Mm -hmm. Yep, happy to serve. Yes, so let's just get right into it. If, if Is there any specific thing that you would like to talk about? If not, let's talk about the spiritual health practitioner and, and, and we'll go from there because I want to also hear about you being an astrologer as well. If you can give us a little uh, bit of, bit insight of, of, of what that means and how'd you come, you know, how'd that come about for you to be a spiritual health practitioner and astrologer, if you want to tie both of those together or anything else. Because I, I forgot to mention TEDx speaker and nature connected coach, lifeline technique practitioner. I mean, just give us a little insight on on any of these or all? Sure. Um, I am a generalist, meaning that I learn everything and I am dedicate myself to be a student of life, right? And the reason because of that is because I started growing up with an autoimmune condition, skin problems, right. wasn't able to heal, mainstream medication wasn't able to help me. So no matter where I go, no matter who I see, it seems like no one has an answer to my health issues. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? At the age of 16, I was like, I'm going to stop this medication. I'm not going to take the health of my body. I'm not going to take responsibility of it. So the first wow. destination I went is the bookstores and just like flip, you know, flip on books. Back then, the internet wasn't that great, right? Right. Yes. We don't have as, as much information as we do now. So I do you know, seek a lot of my knowledge and wisdom from books. And that was when I, I realized that I have many interests mm. in the world. And the spiritual health practitioner came about when um, I realized that behind my healing journey is a self-actualization journey. The more I heal, the more I realized that I was being called by the universe to do a very specific job and to really discover what my purpose is and where my place in the where my place in the world that I could find. So where's home, right? And these are all existential questions just pervaded my mind. Then I realized that there is no difference between what is spiritual and what's practical, mm. right? Spirit wow. and matter are one. It's just that our perception of it is just split into two. Right. So I've dedicated my life into, you know, really understanding what love is and what its healing power is all about. 
and I help people to work on their subconscious mind, to step into their purpose and develop these skills to communicate with people, to create harmonious relationship with people. Because reality is that health is not just the, the absence of symptoms. It's not just your body feeling good. It's having good connection with people, right? It's about having good faith to uncertainty, the unknown and the mysteries of life. It is about having a, a mindset, a mentality on how you show up each day into your business or into things that mean something to you, your passion and your hobbies. And then it's really how do you sustain the energy in your daily life mm, wow. to, 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 to do what you need to do because most of us are burnt out these days. We are doing too much too soon. We have too much in our head. Then it's like, what are you here for? Are, are you just going around and try everything. And like you right. say, time is an asset, right? Right. How much time do we really have? And <laughs> That's so here's uncertain. the thing. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. I came into this space realizing that the answers are not outside of me. Mm. The answers are always inside of me. Right. Exactly. So my work with people is not me giving answers or coaching people in a sense like, here's what you should do. Right. Even though sometimes that's great, but in the end of the day, people should find answers from within themselves. And I'm here to be that mirror. Mm, incredible. That's absolutely amazing. And yes, I like the way that you that you put that. Yes, amazing. Because I I I have come to the realization that the answers are inside of us. And it's incredible when you, you know, uh someone such as yourself, you know, uh throughout your journey has has taken a uh, um, a liking and also a passion to want to guide other people, you know, to to find their own strength and their gifts, you know, within themselves, and that that that's absolutely amazing. So, uh, uh, astrology, yeah, astrologer, how did you? How did that happen? That's one of my first job, actually, and that's one of my first things that I picked up when I began my healing journey. Right. It's interesting. It, it feels like I have a fateful connection with it. Mm. Um, it happened when I was around 20, 21, where I was just contemplating life if mainstream education was for me. And, <laughs> right. Uh... <laughs> no, I no, I'm I'm laughing because I just had that uh, you know, and and please don't lose your train of thought, but I just had a conversation with my wife uh, she just, we were just having a, a friendly conversation and, and she said, oh yeah, you can go back to college and do this and that. I said, I don't want to, <laughs> I said, mm -hmm. I'd rather just yeah. work on my ideas that I have here. I said, rather than go to college, I don't want, and, and I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm not speaking against formal education, but the place that I'm in now, no, I don't think that will cultivate uh, what I really, you know, the things that I want to do, which is create things myself and put it together. You know, and if that's I want to awareness, yeah, if I want to follow a specific field, then that's different. Uh, become a doctor or, you know, a lawyer or something uh, of that effect, then I understand. But no, 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 that that's not along the lines of what I'm looking at right now. So I, I like what I'm hearing. <laughs> I yes. really love what I'm hearing. This right. means that you know you're taking that 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 authority on your own learning and experience. You committed right. yourself to be a student of life because in right. the end of the day, the best classroom is life, right? Mm, right. Um, yes. Universities, colleges are just modeling after that life mm. as a classroom. Right. We are all here on Earth schools, whether we like it or not, and we are really learning through the experiences of life, and then we proactively figure out okay, what skills do we need to to get to where we want to go, right? Because we're motivated by a certain desire. Then, oh, if you want to get there, then you got to work for it. This is what life is, right? right? Farming farming something really yummy, right? The produce mm -hmm. that we eat is, is one example and such is life. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I just, I consider myself more of an artist and a creator. So, uh I don't want to, um, I don't have a desire to, to be involved in anything that's going to suppress my creativity and, you know, you know, what I want to create for myself and in, in, in my own, create my own, 
you know, and, and on my own. And to me, uh, and like I said, this is not any jab at, at it, but to me, formal education is more uh, keeping you in, in line in the, the system that's created to, okay, you do this and then you, you can work here or you can do that. And, mm -hmm. you know, now I just, yeah, I don't have that desire to do that. So um, yes, amazing. So TEDx speaker, give us, give us a little insight on how that unfolded. How'd you become a, a, TED, a TEDx speaker? So before that, I got to go back to the tread of line of astrology. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. We didn't <laughs> finish that. You're right. Moving right. too fast. See? <laughs> so I was leaving. I was I was contemplating if mainstream education was right for me, right? So right. at that time, um, my mom was basically going after, you know, in her 50s, she was looking into like workshops and spirituality and astrology is one of it. So she just, you know, hey, why don't you join me, you know, in an astrology workshop this summer? And I was like, okay, why not? And then... I went to meet the astrologer and then we had this session and then she basically laid out my life for me and all my hidden demons that I did not share with anybody. And I was like, mm, how is it wow. possible? Is this person reading my mind and, and what's going on here? But the funny thing was not what she said to me, was but my experience when I was looking at the astrological symbols. You mm. see, when I was a kid, seven years old, eight years old, I love horoscopes. I will flip to the, to the to the space where I just look at horoscopes, not knowing why. Um, I was just like, oh, genuine interest about it. But at that time when I was receiving the reading and I was just looking at the chart, I memorized all the glyphs and symbols in that one session, in that two hour session. And I was like, to me, it was a remembrance rather than something new. I was like, wow, I'm remembering something here. And everything that she said is just so poignant. And it was just like waking a certain old memory that was just kept under the rug for a very long time. So I thought that was a very powerful initiation into my subconscious mm -hmm. and into the mystery of who I was and who I am going to unfold throughout the world and my life. So I decided to pursue it and read books about it. But at that time, there wasn't a lot of books and materials that really explore the depths of astrology. Mm. They were mo mainly for entertainment or really um, superficial, just scraping the surface kind of astrology. And I didn't like that. Right. And because I'm an avid learner, I was like, okay, I got to go deep. If I really want to do this, I really got to go deep. And okay. it was just like, as if I was just guided by the universe, I ended up meeting the right teachers along the years Absolutely. and eventually found a mentor who knows the depth of astrology. And I just, you know, let myself lose and just studied under him. Absolutely. At the same time, at the same time, astrology was the reason why I've ended up in the U.S., because mm. when I was doing the mainstream education, I was in the UK, mm. um, and and I and the advice given by astrologers sent me to the US, and that's how I ended up in Colorado, and oh, Colorado wow. was where I met my astrology mentor, and that's how you know you know the rest is history, and I I became so good at it that it became one of my first jobs. Oh wow, yeah, that's amazing. <clears throat> Thank you for uh, giving us some some clarity uh in regard to your journey as as an astrologer so yes this uh the next question was uh tedx speak how did you how did you end up being featured as a tedx uh speaker mm -hmm. you see everything happened in my life you know it wasn't planned right most of it was just being guided by whatever the architect of this universe is doing. Right. I basically just sent out an intention. I did write down in my own manifesto, right? I want to be a TEDx speaker. Mm. But I didn't know that it happened so fast. It would happen in the span of six months writing it. Mm. Wow. Um, right. I was participating in a tour. And this tour is something special because it was not just about going on a vacation and going on a holiday and just chill. But it was like a cultural tour to get to know more about a state in my country. 
It's called Sarawak. It's in East Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And one of the cities called Kuching has mm -hmm. won a UNESCO cultural award. Oh, wow. And, and the trip was to create some tourism, some highlight about how beautiful the local ethnicity, culture, and their food is all about. So I was like, hey, um, my friend invited me, the person who organized this. I was like, yeah, why not? Let's do it. So the funny thing is that I met the curator of TEDx, the mm. Kaling Street, someone from Malaysia, um, in this trip. And oh. she was looking for someone who can speak about spirituality from an embodied way rather than someone who reads cookbooks and share stuff, <laughs> right? So I, so I have a fair share of my own experience going through a deep dark night of a soul, you know, going yes. through health crisis, relationship crisis, in, and, and business and prosperity that was just taken out of my feet mm. <laughs> by life. And she was really genuinely interested in my story. And then we, sh we just started connecting and she started, started, you know, asking me a lot of questions. And at that time, just to give a little bit of perspective, we just got out of COVID, right? We just had a huge rite of passage. <laughs> the whole world did. Right. And, and, and the, the theme for, for, for the TEDx that year was reset. Mm. Right? We need to, we wow. need someone to talk about reset and, I know I like a lot it. about reset. I, I have many, many versions of those. Yes. So um, so and that's how I got invited. So I didn't wow. have to audition. I did not have to do anything. I just got invited. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. So how was your experience? Did you did you did you enjoy it? It was a beautiful experience. And um, I won't say it was the highlight of my life. I won't say right. it's a milestone, but it was in fact a stepping stone to show me that sometimes big stages isn't the glory that you think. Mm, wow. It's not. It Amazing. humbled me. It humbled me. Oh, because wow. not every not everybody's ready for a message mm. that is true and authentic. And, Absolutely. And the thing is, people will always hear what they want to hear. And mm. my job is just to be the message. Wow. Is to just I, deliver the message. I really resonate with that because that you can apply that uh insight to everyday life even when you're having a conversation with with someone uh especially someone who was not um and this is again this is not criticism but someone that is not on that um uh, wavelength that you are on uh Oftentimes people hear what they want to hear. It doesn't matter what you say. It goes in there and they interpret it the way they want to hear it. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And oftentimes what the information that you relay is blocked by the, the insight that the person knows and they can only understand from their level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So therefore, mm -hmm. no matter how you try to uh, break it down, they're only going to understand or hear what they want, especially exactly. if, it's, if it's speaking, if it's saying something to them that they're not used to hearing or that it goes against what they think. If they're not open uh, for other perspectives, then they're going to only hear what they want to hear. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And this is where thought leaders, coaches, spiritual teachers, holistic practitioners, you know, those those of us who knew what that means and, right, and understand right. what that is, our role is to be compassion. Because we were once there. And Absolutely. and it takes a certain level of repetition and life experiences for us to finally get it. Right. I like that. Repetition. And our role is to is to humble ourselves. And that's where you see more than just being on stage life or this universe is teaching me something right to me right. my experience on the stage was like a rites of passage again right you yeah. see it's like it's not about you know sharing a great idea that everybody could hear and then it's just like information you know fart for everybody <laughs> just to get it for me it's like i finally get to end a chapter of my life because the thing is when you tell a story and it's being witnessed by a, a collective of a crowd, 
then you end the story and you start embodying the previous wisdom. Mm. So just to give wow. a little context is that the time frame when I, I, I step up as a TEDx speaker was me trying to integrate myself back at home in Malaysia mm. after traveling away from home for more than 10 years, searching for modalities, healing, learning about spirituality, searching who I am and, and what I was supposed to be. Wow. So stepping up on stage and sharing my story was a coming home process for me. Mm. And, and to realize that, hey, maybe everybody at home don't really understand and wasn't ready for my message. Can I be okay with that? Yes. Right. And can I, can I still call this place home? We know our family. We have family members, right? That don't right. understand what the heck is this guy doing. Absolutely. We had a black ship. And but Absolutely. that doesn't mean that we have to, you know, this go go against our family, hating them or just because they don't understand us. Right. So I was processing a, a deeper layer of hurt that the people closest to me don't know who I really am because mm. they just can't. They just can't understand who I am. Right. They're but really they love me. But they love me. Right. But so can don't. I love them back the same way? Yes. And that it's can to hurt. That can pose a challenge. Yes. Especially it is a challenge, yeah. It is a challenge. And I can I can uh, uh relate to that because similar um circumstances within my own family. Yes, including my own, you know, uh parents. You're not not really understanding and um I try to be as gentle as possible, but a lot of the um, old uh, their traditions and their programming as to who they are and what they believe in regard to spirituality or religion, and I, what I'm bringing some things to them that is shaking that up, so they don't understand it. So a lot of times people fear what they don't understand, <clears throat> so they might meet it with uh, strong opposition. You know, <laughs> I'll just leave yeah. it that way. I'll just leave it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Amazing. So <clears throat> give us a little insight on your signature transformational program called HeartQuest. Can you give elaborate on that a bit? Sure. I'd love to. See, HeartQuest is the, the, the creation of all the different experiences, knowledge, and wisdom that I have gathered throughout the journey of my healing process. And what I realized, I think, I don't know if I mentioned this, that behind every healing journey is a self-actualization journey, mm, right? Yes. Right. The reason why we get sick is because we're not living our purpose. Right. Wow. And then if you, if you have a heart, then you have a purpose. And it's your obligation, your responsibility to life to fulfill it. And this is why some of us are, are so called to it and we can't deny it, right? But there are some people who just shut it down, numb it, numb it away, you yes. know, ignore it because it's too scary to, 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 to approach it. It is scary. It is. But, but here's the thing. Would you rather have, you know, face the fear of uncertainty, discomfort, only who you are, or you wait for a wake up call from life through a health crisis, financial crisis, relationship crisis, because it looks like that. Right. I totally so, agree. <clears throat> and I have to say that that's what had to happen to me in order for me to finally wake up and and start embracing uh, uh, certain things and look within. It took yeah. some crisis, some some severe pain. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but this is this is the pain is not the problem. The the problem is not having support and mentors and people who can move you through the pain. Mm. right oh wow life life is filled with pain life is filled with pain absolutely but when pain is met with nurture and safety trust it becomes growth it's mm. just like going to the gym right I like that right but if pain is met with disdain misunderstanding lack of support it becomes trauma it becomes mm. locked up underneath yes. the surface yep. until we are ready to meet it again and re-experience it so that we can transform ourselves wow because sometimes we don't have that maturity to face certain crises and we're not ready for it. Mm. Too fast, too soon, we break. Mm. The, well, the nice dose, we grow and we become powerful, evolved, conscious beings. Wow. That's why we're here. Wow. That's why we're here. So HeartQuest is exactly that container. 
mm. that I want to replicate life. It's a form of rites of passage. It's not something that I do to you. I'm not here to fix you, but it's a container that I guide you through a journey with support, with mentorship, with something I call the four pillars of heart-centered leadership, which I really want to share mm. is those four things is compassionate self-inquiry, wow. which has a lot to do with knowing yourself. You got to ask yourself the right questions. You got to find answers from within, right? Then the second pillar is about transforming those limiting beliefs, behaviors, those memories, traumas that's emotionally charged, right? That's the second pillar. You got to face your subconscious mind. You got to do the inner work, the shadow work, whatever we want to call it, right? That holds us back because there's no point pressing the gas pedal if another foot of yours is pressing the brake pedal. Mm, wow. Going against yourself. I like that analogy. Right? <laughs> right? You got to work with yourself. You got to, you got to... Tell you so, you know, it's okay to lift the brake. And then Absolutely. the third pillar is heart centered interpersonal skills. How do you relate to people? How do you say no? How do you draw boundaries? How do you actively listen and deeply listen and then give good feedback? Right. I believe drawing boundaries as a, as a way of loving someone by telling people how they should love you. Mm. Wow. Being nice, being nice is not, is not good for people <laughs> mm, no i get it i get exactly especially when it's done when it's done with inauthenticity right mm, right yes authenticity comes first then the niceness is real that niceness right. is right. pervasive right. and and it's beautiful mm, right i get it so that's the third pillar how do you have those uncomfortable conversations how do you resolve conflicts how do you deal with uncertainty because it's great that you do all this internal processing, but if you're not out there in the world taking risks, nothing happens to you. Yes, absolutely. A you can I go. Agree. You can go retreats of the retreats, workshops of the workshops, programs of the programs, and and you still won't have any transformational growth because you have not done something about your life. Mm. I've seen it happen with myself. I've seen it happen with my clients. So, absolutely right. This is That's where the edgy part comes in, but the first two pillars helps to support the third pillar, mm, right? Great, incredible. Then the fourth pillar is flow states. Again, flow the states. energy flow states. Where is the energy equation in all of this? You can't do everything, have it all, say it all, do it all, know it all, because you have limited energy. Mm. But I do believe that we are infinite beings, right? With right. infinite potential, with infinite energy. But the thing is, we we don't know how to cultivate that yet. Okay. So, so flow states is something that I've realized has this component of ancient tradition. You know, Tai Chi, Qigong, yoga, that really helps you to tap into that universal energy to do things for you and with you. Then there is the science of it, which is peak performance science where athletes right who does the impossible who get into a state whether if, if it's michael jordan or lebron james or anybody who who have athlete when they're in that highest level they're not thinking mm. they're in a state right. of, higher, of higher consciousness that seems to be able to be to do all these superhuman abilities right but that is cultivated that is not random mm. you can create an environment for you to drop into a flow state again and again and again. And with practice, you know what that feels like. Mm. And for our common people, right? It feels like what? Intuition. Right. Gut feeling. It feels like creativity. It feels like being in a flow of conversation and you get into an aha moment that is insightful. You see, all these moments are ordinary moments that happens to us all of the time, but it's just passed by. Right. Overlooked. We've, we overlooked it. Why? Because right. we're too busy living in our heads. Mm. So for flow states to happen, the alignment between the mind, body, and spirit has to happen. So how do we cultivate that? On a daily practice, on a weekly practice, on a monthly practice, how does that feel like? Mm. So these four pillars creates heart quests, and I bring people into this 15 sessions, a three and a half months process with me to experience what it means to be the best version of yourself. And how do you awaken the gifts that is waiting for you 
to wake up towards to, because I believe your purpose, your gifts, is so invaluable. Because that's how you help others wake up to, and that's how you serve the world. I agree. Transforming the world or saving the world or serving the world doesn't have to be always big, ambitious things that we, that we tend to drown ourselves with pressure before we even start. Mm, it right. could be as simple as just being you. Mm -hmm. Yes. You are the greatest gift in the world that the world needs. We need more people who come to, to aliveness, who embrace who they are and their gifts and their authenticity. That's what the world needs right now. Wow. So this Heart Quest is a, it's a leadership program for sure. But more than anything else, it's seeing yourself as a leader and stepping into a rites of passage of owning your own power so that you can share it with people and mirror the potential in every single person in your community and mm. family. Amazing. Thank you for, for that yeah. clarity. Amazing. <clears throat> We're down to about four minutes. So I wanted to ask you if you can share a few uh, links that people can find you, find your program, uh, seek, you know, your, your services. Uh, if you could share audibly, uh, a link Def or, definitely so. yeah um my website is www.chironyang.com right and uh, my email is ask ask at chironyang.com mm. right and then you can find me on instagram i am very active on instagram okay right um which also the tag for my instagram is at chiron yang's just my name and you'll find everything you need there and the links are all there as well um, feel free to give me a, an, a shout out if you find everything that is being shared here resonates with you. You can just always email me. I'm pretty good at replying emails. Absolutely. Thank you. And, oh, and and quickly, uh, tell us the title of your book, a little bit about what, what it's about and where to find it. Sure. My book is called Coming Home, How okay. I Courageously... Let me just say it. the <laughs> subtitle is pretty long. How I Courageously Love Myself into a Life of Wonder and Ordinary Magic. You'll get this book on paperback or Kindle on Amazon. Okay. All right. If you just Google, uh, just type on the search engine, Coming Home, and then Chiron Yang, you'll definitely find my book that's there. And it's available not just in the US, it's in all Amazon marketplace throughout the world. And... um. It's available in Kindle and paperback. And I do recommend getting the paperback because it's nice to have a physical book and really yes. connect to the energy. And there's, there's really beautiful images in there. And the book is really about my journey, about how I've overcome this really impossible, mysterious autoimmune skin problem okay. and how I've completely healed it, reversed it. And not just reversed it, I am living the time of my life, owning my purpose, experiencing a lot of beautiful adventures from life. So in there, there's four different parts that way I explored my childhood, my teenage years, my adulthood, and, and how I even stepped into the TEDx um, speaking Thanks. gig and what actually uh, unfolded there. Mm, thank you. That's absolutely beautiful. Yes. So pick up that book and I'll make sure I have all your links in, in the description of the, of this segment. But yes, I want to thank you again for uh, bringing incredible uh, value to the platform, to myself and to everyone that's tuning in and that will tune in. I appreciate you very much. Mm -hmm. Likewise, infinite love and gratitude to all of you out there. Absolutely. And thank you everyone, <coughs> excuse me, for watching and or listening. Be sure to hit that like button, that subscribe button, share it, help the platform grow and help get this incredible message out there. Thank you very much. I appreciate you until next time. Love and appreciation. Enlightened, empowered, evolved. See you soon.